On today's Winning Cures Everything, oh, we got a lot to talk about. I'm going to react to, of course, Duke and Clemson from Monday night. we got to talk Florida State, LSU, and, uh, and I'm going to talk about Oregon State as well. The AP Top 25 was released yesterday, Tuesday. Uh, sorry that I'm behind this week, of course. Uh, but we also got to talk about where game day is going for week three. We're going to preview week two. Uh, we got the viewing guide for this week. So we don't have a lot of time to waste. Let's go ahead and get to it. Can you believe it? It's football. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. Welcome in. Winning Cures Everything Wednesday, September 6th. That's right. I'm your host, Gary Seegers. You can follow me on TikTok or Instagram at GaryWCE. Ah, Twitter, still waiting on you. You guys need to respond to me. <laughs> I'm getting tired uh, and I'm going to be on all these other platforms. I'm not going to come back. Swear to God, I'm still suspended over there for those that are just now tuning in for the first time. Uh, I do appreciate you if you are tuned in. Click that like button, hit the subscribe button, all the all the normal things. My goal for this football season is to get to 10 thousand we are over 8900 i need 1100 more share the show tell your friends about it and if you don't like the youtube version that's fine you can always listen to the podcast winning cures everything wherever you get your podcasts but also hop over to youtube and hit the like and subscribe button help me out help me get to this number all right uh if you want my stats and whatnot this week and every week it's going to be over at buymeacoffee.com slash winning cures I put up uh, some stuff over on Telegram. I've got a Telegram, uh, t.me slash GaryWCE. That's the way to get it. There are links in the description for this. Uh, we have Three Dog Thursday that'll be on this channel on Thursdays, not on the podcast feed, only on YouTube. But go ahead and check that out. And uh, what else? Oh, yes, Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, the Bet US College Football Show. We have a blast, an absolute blast over there. So let's go on and get into it. Let's not waste a bunch of time. Duke 28, Clemson 7. I was wrong. I was very wrong. I, <laughs> I would say I've never been more wrong, but I was incredibly wrong. Okay. We're going to pull it up on your screen so that you can see exactly what we're looking at as far as the stats go. Whew. Uh, Clemson stats were not bad, they weren't bad. And I know that everybody is talking about the fact that Clemson needs to hit the transfer portal, right? This is a tool that everybody else uses. Why would Clemson not use it? And I get that, right? There are some holes in this roster that need to be cleaned up. The fact that your longest pass of the day was 21 yards is not great. The fact that Duke played man on these guys and held them in check ain't great. But if you go and look at the drive chart... This is a team in Clemson that did not punt in the second half, but did not score in the second half. I mean, you look at this. Missed field goal, or blocked field goal, whatever you want to say. This is their second half drive. Field goal attempt, missed after a 71-yard drive. They fumbled after a 62-yard drive. They fumbled after a 48-yard drive. Turnover on downs after a 29-yard eight-play drive. They threw an interception after a four-play 14-yard and then turnover on downs where Cade Klubnik uh, went down too early. Which, why on earth? I mean, the, the, he, he ran the ball at one point and ducked his head down and went and tried to get the first down. And then, and, and, and none, of it, none of it makes sense. None of it makes sense. You look at the numbers in this game, and more than likely Clemson should have won the game. But I don't know what to tell you. Uh, looking over at the advanced box score over at uh, College Football Data. And, I mean, we've got a spot here where, you know, Duke, it says Duke was a 63% win expectancy. Eh. I don't know that I necessarily agree. Uh, but I guess, I guess I could see where they're coming from as far as the stats go because Duke had good numbers too, right? 374 yards. They had 175 passing, 199 rushing. Uh, Duke had seven penalties for 45 yards. Clemson only had one penalty. Clemson had 12 more first downs. 
Clemson had a better third down rate. Uh, they did not have a good fourth down rate, obviously. Clemson ran 19 more plays. But the average yards per completion, 7.7 to Duke's 10.3. Duke has an NFL quarterback over there. They are, Duke is good. I mean, Duke is really good. Uh, you go over to game on paper, I mean, you see when that thing flipped. Play number 137. Then you go up to play number 138, and it's just a complete debacle. I mean, I just, uh, it's very irritating. Because I, I backed Clemson minus 13 on the BetUS show. And I felt good about it. But man, you look at that EPA per play, Clemson had a better success rate. Like, <laughs> it's just insane. It's absolutely insane. Uh, this was interesting. And this is one of those spots where this is two times now. Cade Klubnick has been the starting quarterback for two games. And in those two games, they have had way better numbers than they have had points. They scored, what, 13 against Tennessee and 7 against Duke? Not going to get it done. Not going to get it done. You got to be better than that. All right. We'll hop off that one. We, we got plenty to hit on. We do not need to waste time. Florida State, 45, LSU, 24. And, again, just unbelievable what we saw in that spot. I, I was... I was shocked. I was shooketh, as the kids would say. Uh, I don't know if the kids actually say that, but regardless, regardless. Um, I, here, let's fit that thing back on the screen here. <laughs> I'm, having to, I'm having to do all kind of stuff. Uh, Florida State, 494 to 460 total yards. Uh, 359 to 347 passing yards, 135 to 113 rushing. When you look at the sheet, it doesn't look like they dominated the game that much. But it was the important plays where they were able to get it done, right? We're going to pull up the whole thing on here so everybody can see. Uh, you look at third downs. LSU, 3 out of 10. Florida State was 9 of 14. On fourth down, LSU, 0 for 3. Florida State, 1 for 1. I mean, these two teams ran basically the same number of plays. They had the, almost the same average yards per play. And I, I don't even know what to tell you. Same yards per completion? Almost same yards per rush? Almost the same sack-adjusted yards. <laughs> like, But then you look at red zone, and Florida State's four out of four, and Flor uh, LSU is three out of five. It was explosive plays. This is what I said from the get-go. Explosive plays are going to be the, the name of the game here. It's the truth. Jaden Daniels is not that great at creating explosive plays, Jordan Travis is. And that LSU defense was not great at stopping them because that secondary is not great. They could not match up with guys like Keon Coleman and Johnny Wilson. They just couldn't. Uh, this I don't think this was as dominant a victory as a lot of people would think. I mean, this was a 45-17 a to 17 game at one point, but LSU had almost 300 yards in the first half. They were rolling. Like, absolutely rolling. And I I just, I look at it, and I can't quite figure out. Here we go. First half, LSU 293 to 213. LSU was up 17 to 14. But Florida State hit another gear in that second half. Outscored them 31 to 7. Outgained them by over 100 yards in that second half. Uh, they ran the ball 23 times to only 8. They were 10 of 11 passing in the second half to 11 of 15. It was... It was a debacle, absolute debacle. So is LSU as bad as people are making them out to be? No, 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 no. When Mason Smith comes back, I think they're going to be better. Um, I do wonder if things do not go well for them, which it's going to be a little bit, uh, and I don't have the schedule pulled up in front of me, but it's going to be a little bit before they really get tested like this again, especially in the passing game. Uh, do they end up swapping over to Garrett Nussmeyer? I mean, it, it really leads you to a lot of questions. And this is something that's been going on with Brian Kelly for a while, right? His quarterbacks do not seem to develop. We'll see about this offense coordinator. Everybody kind of questioned, you know, Denbrock, eh, is he, is he going to be okay? I mean, they won the West last year. They could potentially do it again this year. But you want to compete for championships? 
I don't know that Jaden Daniels is going to be your guy. I don't know that he's going to be your guy. All right, moving along. Got to hit real quick on Oregon State 42, San Jose State 17. And this one was this one was interesting, right? Let's look at this. Total yards. Outgained of almost 200 yards. This is the same San Jose State team that played USC last week and put up a bunch of points and looked good in the process, right? I mean, that's what this was. Siobhan Cordero, 18 out of 32, 143 yards, no TDs, no picks. They brought in Butterfield, the backup, 7 out of 9 passing, 80 yards, one touchdown. That was against backups. DJ U, DJ Uyangalele, everybody said it was him. It wasn't the Clemson offense, it was him. He's 20 out of 25, 239 with three touchdowns. I mean, the running game. Martinez, I mean, he's, he's all Pac-12. He'll be all whatever league they end up in. Uh, but 18 rushes, 145 yards. I mean, San Jose State, I know that they lost a lot of dudes on defense, but like Brent Brennan and that defensive coaching staff, they understand how to stop the run. But, I mean, you look at sack-adjusted rushing yards, 204. Like they, this, this Oregon State team is awesome. They are going to be really, really good, and they are, they are a force to be reckoned with. Absolutely, they are. And so, cheers to Oregon State. This is that's a team you need to look out for in the Pac-12. They are hardcore, and that defense is kicking right now. So, we'll see what they end up doing. The AP Top 25 was revealed, released after Week One, and let's go on and pull this thing up. Let's see what we're looking at here. Yeah, let's start off on number 15. Number one, Georgia. Number two, Michigan. Three, Alabama. Four, Florida State. Number five, Ohio State. Ohio State dropped two spots. Alabama up one. Florida State jumped up four. There's only three teams getting first place votes right now. Michigan, Georgia, and Florida State. Alabama still no first place votes. I guess everybody just assumes, well, Alabama and Georgia are in the same conference. Can't give them votes. Eh, we'll see. We'll see what that looks like if Alabama were to get a win over Texas. Whoever wins that game, probably going to get some first place votes. Uh, Georgia is probably going to be at number one the rest of the year. It doesn't matter what they do. like uh, Unless they have an offensive output like Ohio State did. And, and even that case, maybe not because everybody just expects them to be a, a defensive team. Uh, the rest of the top ten. USC six, Penn State seven, Washington eight. Number nine, Tennessee. Number ten, Notre Dame. And then you move along from there. Notre Dame, that's going to be an interesting game in Raleigh this weekend. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. Number 11, Texas. 12, Utah. 13, Oregon. 14, LSU. They dropped nine spots. Uh, Oregon, I think, a little bit underrated here. Uh, going to be interesting to see what they do in Lubbock this weekend. 15, Kansas State. They uh, they beat up on a, a pretty decent FCS school, I would say. A pretty decent. And then, let's see, Oklahoma number 18. Oh, excuse me. Oregon State 16, North Carolina 17, Oklahoma 18, Wisconsin 19. And we scroll on. Ole Miss, number 20, moved up two spots after whipping up on Mercer. But the team they played this week beat a really good team in South Alabama, and they didn't move up at all. Colorado jumps in at number 22. Duke comes in at number 21. A&M, Texas A&M, number 23. They don't move. Tulane, uh, not that they don't move. Both of these teams, I guess, were not ranked last week. Now that I'm thinking about it. But either way, Clemson drops to 16, or excuse me, they drop 16 spots to number 25. Uh, your others receiving votes, Iowa, UCLA, Arkansas, TCU, Kentucky, Pittsburgh, Mississippi State, Miami, NC State, Auburn, Troy, Fresno State, Minnesota, Wyoming, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Um, this poll doesn't really matter. Uh, week two is going to tell us a lot more than week one did. I know that. Week two will tell us significantly more than week one did. So, all right. Uh, let's, uh, let's hit this ad right quick. You guys know I don't like leaving you for too long. Um, but we're going to hit this, and then on the backside, we're going over where game day is going for week three. We're going to do college football week two preview and the viewing guide. But first, let's, uh, let's go ahead and do this. Let's check out some things you should know about. Every Tuesday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, expert game analysis only on the BetUS TV College football channel. 
If you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or whatever's your favorite podcast app. And if your app allows it, leave a five-star written review. Visit the Winning Cures Everything web store to get all kinds of football shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and more. Visit winningcureseverything.com slash store to see what all we've added. And now, back to the show. All right. All right. Uh, where is college game day going for week number three? Week two had a bunch of options. Obviously, they went with Texas, Alabama. That's not a question. That's a massive brand matchup. Two teams that are vying for a college football playoff spot. But where do they go for week three? I got a couple of options. I'll go on and tell you where I think they are going to go. If Colorado State gets a win this weekend and Colorado gets a win this weekend, I get the feeling that ESPN is going to go to Folsom Field for the Colorado State-Colorado game. I think they want in on this prime stuff. I think they want to get Deion Sanders on set. And if you wait too long, they play at Oregon in week four. I don't think you're going to get them at that point. In week four, you got a bunch of big-time matchups that week. So I don't think that's what you're wanting. Um, but we, we shall see. Let's see. Week four, uh, you have got... I'm going to pull it up here. Let's see. Week four, you're looking at... Da, 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 da. Maybe not a bunch of big games. Uh, Ohio State, Notre Dame, that's where they're probably going to go. Iowa at Penn State. Um, Ole Miss at Alabama. Oregon State, Washington State, UCLA, Utah, Florida State, Clemson. You, you got you got a bunch. A bunch in week four. So, Auburn A&M, another one to check out. So, that is an interesting one uh, for next week. So, you're probably not going to get uh, Oklahoma, or excuse me, Colorado and Oregon in that one. And uh, that might be week five. That might be, they might have a bye week. Either way, we'll figure that out. We'll figure that out as we go. Uh, 9 p.m. Central Time, and it's on ESPN. ESPN's got Colorado next week. Seems like the perfect spot. If that doesn't work, maybe you go to the backyard brawl. If West Virginia looks somewhat comparable, or if they look competitive at all this week, then maybe you can get the backyard brawl. If you get Pitt to beat Cincinnati, maybe you get that one. Uh, The other one, maybe Kansas State at Missouri. Um, but next week, I mean, there's just not a lot going on on the schedule. So I'm curious. I'm curious about it. So week three, uh, that's going to be that's going to be a tough one. Maybe you go to Mississippi State and LSU. Maybe you go to Penn State, Illinois. I mean, it, there's there's just nothing on the schedule. Minnesota at uh, North Carolina next week. <laughs> oh, what a putrid schedule. Uh, Washington at Michigan State, I would say, yeah, except that the game's on Peacock. So, whatever, I guess. Uh, but yeah, my guess is going to be... Uh, my guess will be Colorado State and Colorado is where game day will be in week three. You want to jump in on the hype? Uh, it makes all the sense in the world. All the sense in the world. All right, let's do the preview. Our preview for week number two starts off with... Oh, goodness. The biggest brand games. And basically, we're going to try and guess who will get the highest ratings this week. And my guess is Nebraska and Colorado will get the highest ratings. It's the Fox Big Noon Kick. I'm thinking that that game is going to get over $7 million again. The biggest game last week was uh, LSU Florida State. Had over 9 million viewers. But Colorado TCU had over seven and a half. I think you're going to see the same thing here. If you get a tight ball game with Nebraska-Colorado, yeah, that's going to be something. Texas-Alabama, I think, will do a comparable number. I think it's going to do well over $7 million on ESPN. But again, that's cable. You've lost Spectrum. You've lost a bunch of, a bunch of subscribers. That's 15 million people that if Spectrum and Disney don't get their deal worked out, they're not going to be able to get ESPN unless they swap over, right? So... We'll see. I think I think we'll still get over seven million. That game got over ten last year on Fox. Texas A&M at Miami. That's an ABC game at the uh, three thirty p.m. Eastern Time spot. I think it'll do over four million. I think that game's going to be pretty tight. Notre Dame at NC State. I expect that to do over three million. Notre Dame against an actual opponent. 
that's going to do well, I would imagine. And it's on ABC instead of NBC. It's a spot where everybody knows where it is. And that's, that's an early game. Uh, but again, Notre Dame and C State is competing with Coach Prime. Wisconsin at Washington State. I think that one could do $3 million. That's in the afternoon. Not a, or Excuse me, that's a primetime game. Mm. I, th- I think it still probably does over three. I think it still probably does over three. It's ABC as well. Oregon at Texas Tech, I think it'll do over $2 million. May not hit the three because you're competing with Alabama and Texas. That's the way I'm looking at it. So those are your biggest uh, brand games for the weekend. Games that I think are going to have the biggest ratings. Uh, the most exciting games of the weekend. I think A&M Miami is going to be fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Uh, Texas Bama. Yeah, I've, I've got a lot of questions I'm, I need to have answered. That's what I'm looking for from that one. Texas State and UTSA. That's another one. It's going to be really, really fun. Texas State showed out against Baylor, but how much of that is the fact that Baylor is not very good on defense? And the offense, now, no quarterback, uh, yeah, whatever. But uh, UTSA, of course, lost against Houston. They are headed back to the Alamo Dome. That's going to be an interesting one. And, of course, there's the storyline. I heard Bud talking about this on Cover 3. I didn't realize uh, G.J. Kinney actually played high school ball for Jeff Trailer. Who would have thought that? Uh, UConn-Georgia State, I think, could be really exciting. I think that could be a very interesting game. Uh, don't expect a ton of points. Both teams like to run. It could be <laughs> that could be like a two-hour ball game. But, yeah, I think it's going to be tight. Uh, SMU-Oklahoma, you want points? We got points. Are you not entertained? Uh, that's going to be a fun one. And then Coastal Carolina and Jacksonville State. I think that could be very, very entertaining as well. Uh, that could be an exciting, close contest. I know the spread is like 13. I don't trust this coastal coaching staff at all. And you got Rich Rod on the other side. He'll be able to put up points on that defense for Coastal. Absolutely he will. So that's something to pay attention to. Who's got the most to gain and who's got the most to lose this week? Jeff Halfley, Boston College coach. They're playing Holy Cross this week. Holy Cross is good. They're really good. That's the team that beat Buffalo last year. If Boston College does not show up in this spot, uh, I'd, Halfley may be looking for a job soon. Like I, I thought he'd at least get through the year, but uh, that, could, that could really be bad. Uh, Jeff Trailer, who's got the most to gain? Who's got the most to lose? Jeff Trailer against, uh, against Texas State. That's right. We just talked about that. Already lost to Houston. This is your first year in the AAC. I expect them to win big here, but you don't show up for this. Eh, that could be interesting. Could be interesting. Dana Holgerson, again, he got the win last week, but you're playing your crosstown rivals. You got a massive, massive emotional win against an in-state rival. Now you got a team that's in the same city as you that has JT Daniels a quarterback. You better come out and take care of business. 100%. And then Colorado against Nebraska. Again, I think they're going to get game day next week. I think it's going to be wild. But in order for them to get game day, you got to beat Nebraska this week. So I think there's a lot a lot on the table for good old Deion Sanders here. The most likely underdog outright winners this week. I got Cal plus 208 against Auburn. These are the kind of games that, and we'll talk more about these, obviously, on Three Dog Thursday. Uh, obviously, that's a show about underdogs. But I'm interested in that Cal-Auburn game. Very interested. Uh, NC State plus 250 against Notre Dame. How much of them not looking very good against UConn was the fact that they are playing Notre Dame this week? And Notre Dame hasn't played a team with a pulse yet because we saw that Navy is not very good. They are not very good. Nebraska is plus 140 at Colorado. Only a three-point dog, but plus 140. A lot of people. A lot of people on Colorado. A lot of betting tickets on Colorado. I mean, it's <laughs> what Deion Sanders has done for this sport is absolutely wild. Absolutely wild. Texas. Plus 220 at Alabama. If Quinn Ewers gets going, if those injuries in the secondary are not fixed, could be... And on top of that, if Texas's defensive line can stop Alabama's running game, they can kind of bait Jalen Milrow into some, uh, some mistakes, some bad decisions. 
that's going to be interesting. UConn plus 120 at Georgia State. Uh, we saw Georgia State can be scored on last week, but the issue there is Rhode Island passed for like 400 plus yards. UConn ain't going to do that. Can they run on Georgia State? That's the question. Texas Tech is plus 210 at home against Oregon. I think Oregon is significantly better, but crazy things happen in Lubbock. And then I've got Miami plus 165 against A&M. That's another dog that... It, would it surprise you if any of those things happened? If Cal beat Auburn, if NC State beat Notre Dame uh, at home, if Nebraska beat Colorado, I don't think that would surprise a whole lot of people. Texas at Alabama, you might get surprised. That's a seven-point spread. UConn over Georgia State, nobody would be surprised. Texas Tech over Oregon, that might surprise some people considering Texas Tech lost to Wyoming last week. But again, Lubbock is weird. Uh, and then Miami and A&M. I mean, that game is in Miami Gardens. I don't think it'd surprise a whole lot of people. The G5 game of the week this week, Texas State and UTSA. I think that's the G5 game of the week. You're going to see some very interesting stuff going on with those two offenses. And Frank Harris needs to get right. He's had two bad games in a row if you got the bowl game. Uh, Marshall and ECU, I think, could be very interesting. Uh, very interesting. I think, I mean, I picked Marshall to win the Sun Belt East. They did not look good against Albany last week. And ECU, of course, not great against Michigan, but that's Michigan. Big difference. Ohio at FAU. So Curtis Rourke is going to play, they, they say. He's cleared. He's ready to go. But they're playing at FAU. That line has gone from five down to three and a half. FAU, I think, wants a little bit of revenge for last year, and I think this defense has gotten a little bit better. They have a competent coaching staff now. And so, and an experienced quarterback. Casey Thompson's good. He's a good quarterback. Uh, finally, I got Jacksonville State and Coastal Carolina just because I want to see what Rich Rod does against Tim, uh, Tim Beck. Uh, Grayson McCall is still really, really good, but that offense is not running the same way that it did. I, I get that they played against UCLA, and I think UCLA's defense is improved, but that is a game that's going to be a lot of fun. That's going to be a whole lot of fun. All right, let's move into the viewing guide. And our college football viewing guide for week number two here. Let's go and pull this up on your screen so you can see what we're looking at. We are going to start off at 10 a.m. Central Time. We're going to talk about Central Time because it's God's time zone, of course. Vanderbilt at Wake Forest. What is Vandy this year? Now, Wake Forest kind of kind of clocked them last year, so that's something to kind of pay attention to. Uh, I'm interested in that one. Very, very interested in it. Um, you know what? Let's start off on Thursday. I'm sorry. I completely skipped two days, and we can't do that. When you got a viewing guide, you got to talk about all of it. Let's start on Thursday. Murray State at Louisville. It's the only college football game that's on. It's on the ACC Network, 6.30 p.m. Central. It, I'm not interested in watching the Chiefs and the Lions. I want to watch the Louisville Cardinals and the Murray State Racers. So <laughs> we'll see uh, what happens there on Thursday. On Friday, Illinois heads to Kansas. That's going to be an interesting ballgame. 6.30 p.m. Central on ESPN2. That's going to be a fun game. I'm excited about that one. So we'll, we'll see what ends up happening up here. Uh, then we'll get over to Saturday. All right, so I, I told you. Vanderbilt at Wake Forest. That's your 10 a.m. Central Time kick on ACC Network. Um, is Wake Forest still as good? It, does that offense move as well? They they looked pretty good against Elon last week. Uh, Vandy got a win over Hawaii in Week Zero. Beat Alabama A&M last week. It, is Vandy ready to compete with a team that is as well coached as Wake Forest? That's going to be the question. For the noon slate, the game that is going to be on my main TV. Nebraska at Colorado. Have to be. 11 a.m. Central Time on Fox. It's a big noon kick. Uh, I mean, you, it's the prime show. You just got to see what they're going to be like, what they're going to do. I mean, it, is TCU that bad? Or, you know, it, what what can Nebraska do on offense? Are they going to be able to keep up? Is, is Colorado going to make those absolutely ridiculous skill position plays every single week? We'll see. Uh, at the same time, on my other TV, I'm going to have Notre Dame at NC State. Definitely, definitely got to watch that one. Got to see what Notre Dame looks like against a real team. Uh, moving along. Headed to the 3.30 slot. 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central. Again, God's time zone. 
My main TV is going to have Texas A&M and Miami on it. 2.30 p.m. Central on ABC. I want to see what's going on there. Now, on my other TVs, I'm going to have one screen that's got ESPN Plus on, Texas State at UTSA. ESPN 2 has got Ole Miss at Tulane. That's going to have, uh, I'm going to have that on one of the TVs. I'll probably have Texas State uh, UTSA on the iPad. Uh, but Ole Miss, Tulane on one of the smaller TVs, and Iowa, Iowa State on Fox on one of the smaller TVs. Uh, those two games, I think, could be very, very interesting. We'll move into the primetime spot Saturday, 7 p.m., Texas at Alabama, 6 p.m. Central Time on ESPN. That one's going to be fun. Texas, Alabama. We talked about that one just a little bit. Um, on my other TVs, I've not decided which way I'm going to go here. I know one of them's going to have Oregon, Texas Tech, but I think that one could get, it could get crazy. So I, I think Oregon could win that one by multiple scores. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I did not like what I saw out of Texas Tech. Uh, and you guys tell me in the comments, like, boy, what do you think going on here? Like, what this Texas Tech roster I didn't think was that bad, but who that defense did not look good, and the offense could not get a push. It, it was it was crazy. I don't think Wyoming is that good, uh, but maybe maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? On ABC, you got Wisconsin and Washington State. I think that's going to be on one of my other ones, and then I think that Arizona and Mississippi State is going to be on my iPad. Uh, I might have SMU Oklahoma on ESPN Plus on. Uh, on my computer, <laughs> you, that's the thing about college football Saturday. You got to have multiple screens. You got to be able to do it so you can kind of keep up with what's going on with everything. Uh, but uh, my main one is going to be obviously Texas at Alabama. That is, of course, if, uh, if we don't have this baby this weekend. So <laughs> I'm planning all this stuff out, all the stuff I'm going to do, and uh, and my wife. Our due date is on Saturday, so we'll see. We'll see what happens there. She ain't here yet, though. It's only Wednesday, though. Uh, moving on to the night slate. 9.30 p.m. Central Time. I'm going to be watching Auburn at Cal on ESPN. I think that game is going to be fascinating. This Jake Spavitol offense that Cal is running right now with Ott at, at running back, they are so good. And if Sam Jackson's healthy, whew, be ready for some points. Hugh Freeze going on the road for the first time. I mean, that, that's going to be fun for Auburn, right? Get you a burner. Let's go. Uh, Stanford at USC is going to be on my other screen because that kid Ashton Daniels, for them, that quarterback running that Troy Taylor offense, they were good against Hawaii. They were really good against Hawaii. Uh, does that mean you're going to be able to put up points on USC? Does that mean you're going to be able to stop USC? Probably not. I mean, it's a 30-point spread for a reason. It's been bet down to 29. I think Stanford could find a way to put up some points here. And, so, and I've got SMU Oklahoma down here. It's a 5 p.m. Central Time kick. Uh, if that one gets weird... Obviously, I'm going to be pulling that one up. I might have that one on the phone. We'll, we'll see what that looks like. But, yeah, that's going to be crazy. Absolutely crazy. All right, let's move off of that. And i got one more thing that I want to talk to you about. I didn't do a Monday show this week. Obviously, it was Labor Day. I was hanging out with some Ole Miss guys, having a good time, having a good time. And i got to tell you, the unlikely wins from week one – were fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Now, I'm not going to put these on the screen or anything, so you're going to have to listen to me. Uh, so for those on the podcast, you're used to it. But on YouTube, you're used to kind of seeing what I'm talking about. Um, the unlikely wins in week one. The most unlikely win was Louisiana Monroe getting a 17-13 to win over Army. They had a .006% chance to win that game based on the statistics of the game. I mean, that's, that's got to break your heart if you're Army. Now, service academies, typically these things skew their direction, but this one was wild, absolutely crazy. Uh, after that, you had Minnesota with their 13-10 win over Nebraska last Thursday. 4.71% chance to win that game based on the stats. Now, the stats obviously take out turnovers and whatever else. It's just what did you do, who dominated, and Nebraska dominated that game but they turn the ball over too many times. Two goal-to-go situations, you only get three points out of it? Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Uh, but Clemson, of course, one-upped them <laughs> on Monday night. Just, just absurd. Um, after that, Oklahoma State, 27-13 over Central Arkansas. They only had a 19.6% post-game win expectancy. I, that does not make me feel good about them going to Arizona State. And Arizona State isn't that good. 
So, uh, Houston, 17 to 14 over UTSA. They had a 22% postgame win expectancy. Uh, Wyoming, they're 35 to 33 win over Texas Tech, only a 42.4% win expectancy. And then Western Kentucky, their win over South Florida, that's a game that I gave out the underdog on. I gave out South Florida plus 12 and a half. Should have covered. Should have covered. They won by 17. Their postgame win expectancy was 43.4%. We, we got to keep an eye on Western Kentucky. We got to keep an eye on that. So, all right. It's been over 30 minutes. I didn't, I didn't fit all of it in under 30. It's a shame. But either way, I do appreciate you for being here. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Of course, again, we're racing to 10,000. There's all these other ones. Josh and, and those guys, over, they hit over 200,000. Bud and that bunch, they've hit, you know, 30,000. I'm just trying to get 10. The Bet US show that I do, we're over 14,000 over there. Why is my solo show only at 8.9? Help me out. Let's get to 10K. Let's get to 10K. Share it out. Tell your friends about it. All that good stuff. Uh, don't forget, buymeacoffee.com slash winning cures. Of course, you want to check out my telegram uh, I will send out all of my picks on that during the week so you can know exactly what I'm doing. Um, not only the ones on BetUS, but the other ones that I make throughout the week. That's Telegram. You look up Gary WCE there, uh, but it's t.me slash Gary WCE in your browser. Uh, along with that, BetUS College Football Show. Subscribe and watch over there. We went over 16 games this week, so we've had a lot of fun on that one. Uh, and then, of course, Three Dog Thursday will be out on Thursday. It's going to be a good time. Going to be a good time. I can't wait. All right. Let's leave. Let's go. Again, like the video. Tell your friends. Jump in the comments. I want to know what you think about the show. Uh, but with that said, it's time for you to uh, get out of here. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Uh, God bless college football. And hopefully, all of your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me, Gary at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.